Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Hola, you amazing artist, and welcome to my very quick and lazy uh, photographing your art tutorial. In this video, what I'm going to show you is how it is that I quickly take pictures of my art and not only quickly take pictures of my art where it's like, oh, I could post these on social media, but also uh, where I take pictures for creating prints. I know that for a lot of artists, there's this question about whether or not you should have your artwork scanned in, whether or not you should um, get professionally done. In all honesty, with the way the technology is now, and especially even technology on your pajon, um, you can pretty much take really, really good pictures just from the device that you have, which I should have grabbed it for this video. Where's your device? I left my device somewhere else. Why would you do that? <laughs> I don't know. So the first part of this, I'm gonna show you how it is that I take pictures when I'm indoors. Like let's say that it's too overcast outside or it's uh, the weather's just not good. I do have a setup for taking pictures inside and it is important, very important that your lighting, your lighting be daylight bulbs, right? So I have non-flicker, uh, LED daylight bulbs in the studio. It sounds all complicated or whatever, but it's not. It's actually the, the daylight bulbs, 60 watt that I buy from Home Depot. For some of them, I have a diffuser sock that goes over the, the lighting cone that uh, that way it diffuses that light and I'm not getting harsh lighting. Usually what I do is I set up three point lighting, but in this example, I've only got the, the overhead light on there and you guys are gonna see that that's good enough. I use my phone to take pictures of my art. A few years ago, these cameras got really, really good. So if you have a DSLR, you could use that as well. I have used that in the past, but like, there's something about, I, I don't know, I, I never buy extra lenses. So like my lens is always rounded out a little bit. So with the camera, you could get a really nice flat. And the secret in order not to have glare in the picture is to wait until you are done taking pictures to varnish, you know, and we all know that the varnish always makes the colors pop. You'll fix that in your editing software. You know, you just up the contrast a little bit and it'll bring up that pop. And that's basically what varnish does for my paintings is that it brings up the contrast. So all the lighting in here, these are daylight bulbs. And some of these, as you could tell, like with this one up here, it's got the uh, little cover. I don't know what that is. We call it the light sock. It's got a little light sock on there. So it diffuses that daylight bulb. That's about a 60 watt that's up there. And what it's gonna do is that light is gonna come down and you gotta think of it almost like a mirror. Like this light is coming down, it's gonna bounce off of here and then it's gonna go down this way, right? So I'm not gonna get any of that light right on the painting. And that's what it looks like. Now, very important. I did that with my hands, right? This picture is never going to become a print because there's little micro movements with your hands. You know, you shake a little bit or something. So whenever I want to take like a really, really good picture, I'll grab a tripod and I will set my camera up and then you are going to touch the screen where you want your focal point to be. Like with this painting, it's okay with this lighting environment that I hit on the Raven uh, because it's not gonna cause the contrast to bounce out. So like that's something that you wanna look at, but do focus somewhere. Position the camera straight on to the painting, right? These paintings are angled up a little bit so that I don't get any weird reflections. Then you look at your picture and you make sure that you have zero glare in your painting. If you do have glare, it means there might be some light off in the background that is reflecting into it. Move the painting around or move the lighting if you have them on tripods. I think ultimately what's most important is making sure that you are keeping an eye on glare. It drives me crazy when I see these pictures of this these beautiful works of art and there's a big spot of glare in there that's hiding the painting. And whatever phone you have, you're gonna find a timer, you're gonna set it to 10 minutes. 10 seconds. You're gonna set it to 10 seconds, 10 minutes would be a long time to wait. You make sure one more time that you have it where you want to, you touch the screen one more time, and then let it go.
that's an example of something that is uh, doesn't have too much glare in it. Sometimes, though, I have paintings, uh, for example, like this guy, that is very shiny, right? I've already varnished him. Uh, let's say that I forgot to take a picture of him. And if I position him here, if I take a picture, you're going to see some of the glare. See, this would actually be the perfect picture because right now the only glare that I'm getting is on the top lines here. Um, but let's say that I didn't want, that I wanted zero glare in this painting, right? I would probably figure out how to stand him up. So I would prop this painting up as straight as possible. What that means is that all the lighting that is going to take place on this is coming from back here, behind me, directly behind me. And then I'm going to position the camera. So when I look at this, I notice that this light over here is giving me some glare. So I'm gonna turn off this light. Now I've got a little tiny bit of glare coming in on the on some parts of his nose on the left side, but I actually don't care. I think it's fine. And that one's going to be a little bit blurry because I didn't set the timer on that just to show you guys an example. But that's what I do. If you notice, it's not brightly lit. It doesn't need to be brightly lit. You just want to control the light on there. You don't want it to be too dark. You don't want it to be too light. You want to make sure that you check and see what looks best in the camera. If you have varnish on your painting or it's glossy, it's going to reflect just like a mirror. So you got to treat it like a mirror and make sure that you position the painting or position the lighting wherever it is that you have it in a way where it's not going to reflect off of the piece into the camera. Outside, which is honestly the best environment to take pictures, but there is a trick to it. You can't be in direct sunlight right? Because then you get this weird, you'll get the glare from the sun. Um, you want to be in the shade, but you also want to be aware of what colors are behind you, right? So if you have something that's reflecting light, it's going to reflect into the painting, especially with this one. I brought out a painting that has gloss on it. So I can show you guys the best way to set this up. So as you can see, it's in the shade. Now with this painting being where it is, right? And I know that the sun is reflecting on some things back there. The best thing to have behind you is trees because they absorb the light. You set your timer. I usually set it for 10 seconds because that way it'll get rid of any of the shake that there is in the camera as soon as you hit the button. And then I hit it and let it go for 10 seconds. One of the things you also want to keep an eye on when you're taking pictures outside is you, where you're at and where your shadow is, right? So you don't want the light to be straight on from the back and then you're taking a picture because then it's going to mess with your painting. So you do want light to be maybe like 12 in the afternoon, 1 o'clock, 11 o'clock, around that time. And you want to make sure that it's off to the to a left or a right area. That's a nice little dance, but that's what you want when you're taking pictures of your art. And then, then you're ready to edit your pictures. At the end of the day, I make sure that the pictures are good, but for the most part, it doesn't require any like elaborate equipment. Now, there are photographers out there that know way more about this stuff than I do as far as using a DSLR and stuff like that. I have used a DSLR, but my lenses are not really set up the most best way to do it. So for right now, I use my camera. And to be honest with you, the results have been perfect. So when I'm editing something to throw up on social media, let's say I will edit it in my phone and I use Snapseed for that. Uh, and if you watched Klee's tutorial, you'll see that she uses Snapseed to edit her pictures as well. Now, if I'm going to use the picture as an example with a mock-up or something like that, I upload it to my computer and I use Affinity. Some of you may use Photoshop. I use Affinity because I don't like Photoshop subscription system. So I like buying the thing outright and Affinity gives me the opportunity to do that. And then what I do for my mockups is I use Canvi, canvi.com for the mockups. Um, I love 
their system. I love how easy it is to create and build your mockups with them. I have a coupon code in the description. If you want to try out Canvi, you could get three months off and try it out. I highly recommend you use Canvi for your mockups. It just makes your life so much easier. And that's it, you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed my quick, uh, you know, this is how Rafi takes pictures of his art. You know, no ho no holds barred. Not not no holds barred. No holds barred makes it sound like you're fighting with your. I know it's, that's not what I'm trying to say. Gloves off, <laughs> cage match with your art. Cage match with your art. No, not cage match with your. What do what am I trying to say? What it? Uh, not no holds barred. Um, no frill. No frills. No frills. Yeah. No no frill. No no complications. Just easy way to do it. Okay. Again, I don't know how to end this video. So good luck. Yeah. Uh, say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.